Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Today we have a new filming location. I finally got a desk in my room, so I'm kind of sick of sitting in front of my bookshelves for every single video. I feel like you guys need to change it for a bit so you get to see my bed and my door and the wild hanger that's behind me. So yeah, um, today we're going to be doing the video that we do every single month. It is the YA anticipated releases for March, which can you believe it is already March next month? I still haven't even registered this 2021 yet. Um, crazy. We're already three months in. Um, so in these videos I always include like books that I look at the Goodreads list every single month and whatever sounds interesting to me. I'm not going to be going through every single book on this list. I'm not going to be going through every single book on that list because not every single one of them sounds interesting to me. I'm including sequels that I want to read, everything else. So I will always link the list down below so that you can look at it yourself. Um, and yeah, so. As we all know, just a bit of a disclaimer, I am pretty sure all these are coming out next month, but some of them maybe changes because of the whole pandemic thing. Publishing has been kind of crazy lately. So, yeah. Without further ado, we're going to get into a thing about 18 books to talk about today, so it's going to be a long one. It's Hopefully it's going to be a good one for you. I hope that you enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Okay, so first off, we have Chain of Iron coming out by Cassandra Clare that is being released on March 2nd. I don't think I need to explain this one, but I will just because... Some people may not know, and I feel like it's just, you know, we got to keep it together, kind of. So this is, it's from Cassie Clare's very vast world of the Shadowhunters realm, and it's following the kids from the Infernal, Infernal Devices series. So it's a continuation series of their kids, um, and all the wacky adventures that they get put upon, and I've only read City of Bones by her. <laughs> um, I'm very behind in that series and that entire world. I've only read one book, so... I'm so excited for it nonetheless because I feel like I'm still going to want to read it. I'm still going to read it eventually. It's just going to take me quite a long time to get to that point, which is fine. Okay, next we have Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is being published on March 30th, and this is a second part of the Nikolai duology, and Nikolai is a character in the, her entire Grishaverse series. Um, I've only read Shadow and Bone by her, so I haven't really been introduced to Nikolai yet. I hear that he's like a fan favorite though, so I'm excited to see him um, eventually when I get into the second part of the series. And it's basically about him trying to find a way to restore um, or find a way to stop the threat towards the Grisha's army. And he, as each day goes by, he sends his dark magic inside of him and he tries to venture through the darkest parts of Ravka to find out if he can stop what's going on inside of him in terms of the magic inside of him. So I am reading these books in order. So I am reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy and I'm going to go to the Six of Crows duology and then I'm finally going to make it to the Nikolai duology. So it might take me a long time. Once again, that's fine. I actually really like Shadow and Bone, which a lot of people didn't like it. I loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, so I'm excited to see where this entire world goes for me because I heard that it does get a lot better when Six of Crows happens, but since I already loved Shut up, but anyway, I'm like, well, it can't get better than this, right? Apparently it can. Hopefully it will. So, yeah, I'm excited for it. Next, we have Bone Criers, Dawn by Catherine Purdue. is being published on March 30th, and this is the sequel to Bone Criers Moon, which was a owl crate and a fairy loot book, so it did get a lot of hype when it came out last year, and this, the first book is about a group of people called Bone Criers who, it's a group of women who have to, in order to gain powers, sacrifice their first love and kill them and harvest their souls. What a feminist mood. Um, and our main character's name is Alys, and she has been prepared to become a bone crier since birth, and so she must kill the boy that she's destined to love, but she has not found him yet. Our other main character's name is Bastian, and he ends up taking one of the bone criers in captivity, and Alys and Bastian's fates become entwined, and one of her other friend's name, I think her name is Sabine, has to find a way to rescue Alys and make sure that nothing happens between them. So. I haven't read the first book yet, obviously. I feel like a lot of people didn't like it, um, so I'm kind of nervous, but I'm still going to give it the benefit of the doubt and read it because it still sounds interesting to me, but a lot of people that I know and trust didn't like it, so that is very upsetting, but either way, this is the last book in the duology, so after this book, it's done with. Um, it's a very short series, so I'm going to read it. It sounds interesting, but yeah, that's coming out next month. Next we have, I'm looking at my phone, by the way, that's why I keep looking to the side. So yeah, Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is being published on... March 2nd, and no, it's not March 9th. It's being published on March 9th. <laughs> I was looking at the other one, so I'm gonna read a synopsis because if I can't find a way to summarize a synopsis in a good way, I just read it to you because it's just easier that way. So this says, in this charming debut fantasy for fans of Sorcery of Thorns and Girls of Paper and Fire, love both those books, 
A witch cursed never love meets a girl hiding her own dangerous magic, and the two strike a dangerous bargain to save their queendom. Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling coven and cursed with the inability to love. The only way that she can get those feelings back, back, even just for a little while, is to steal love from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic, despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to train with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Ren, the only caretaker to her ailing father, has spent her life hiding her secret. When a magical plague ravages the queendom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes the bargain. If Tamsa will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing, and this you have a long, perilous journey ahead of them, that is, if they don't kill each other first. I think this is going to be a sapphic romance, which I absolutely love. I'm so excited. I really want to read all of the lesbian romance throughout 2021. I love that so much. And I think this is a standalone too, so I feel like it's going to get wrapped up really nicely, and I'm just so excited to read it, since it can be so interesting, and yeah. <laughs> I really don't know what to say for that kind of stuff because it just seems like everything's exciting or so I'm going to be talking about it. Um, okay, next we have Right Tigress by Emily Wen Zhao. This is the second book in the, well, it's a sequel to Blood Air by her. And it comes out on March 2nd. And the first book is basically about a world that is set off of Russian folklore. Or I think it's like kind of like an Anastasia retelling, but I'm not sure. Because um, it doesn't seem like it in the first book. And it's basically about like a Russian world where people are Affinites, some people, and that means that they have a specific power over a certain thing, and people who are Affinites are usually captured and taken captive to basically be slaves. And our main character, Anastasia, is the crown princess, and she has the most dangerous form of Affinites, or the most dangerous affinity, which is power over people's blood. So it's a very, like, gruesome and very dangerous affinity. And her father ends up getting murdered and people assume that it's Anastasia because of her affinity and she has to run away and hide the fact that she's a princess and she basically goes to find a man named Ramson Quicktongue to basically <laughs> enlist and break him out of prison and help her figure out or find a way to get back and solve her father's murder and prove her innocence. So the first book I actually didn't really end up liking. I gave it like three stars I think. Um, there's a lot of issues with the first book. As Emily Wen Zhao is a debut author at the time of the first book coming out, I kind of cut her a bit of slack because it was like, you're going to get better. You obviously have to grow as a person and an author to actually, you know, fix those issues. So I'm hoping with the second book coming out, those issues are going to get rectified and end up being a really, really great book because it did end on cliffhanger. I'm actually excited to read the second book because of the way that it did end. And I like the characters, just that a lot of things in the book was like novice kind of writing, which is fine. Obviously, it's her first book. So that's why I'm reading the second book and giving it the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully those issues get fixed in the next book. Next, we have The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This is being published on March 2nd, and this is going to be the first book in a fantasy duology. Um, okay, so this book is about a girl named Valeria, and she is one of the only survivors of the Freeze, which is a dark magical hold that the mountain holds over her town. Everyone, including her family, is trapped underneath a unbreakable sheet of ice, excluding Valeria. Val Valeria was the only one that was able to escape. Ever since that, she's been on the run from the Tsar, which was seeking to imprison anyone that did escape the freeze. Um, Valeria starts doing odd jobs for the Thieves Guild with her best friend Alec, and ends he ends up being brutally murdered. Until a year later, when she finds out that Alec was not murdered, and he was actually being held captive by someone. So she has to go and put together a, a whole team of cutthroats on a perilous mission to go and find her best friend while also venturing the same town that has her family captive. Okay, so a lot going on with the synopsis. I usually don't like survival stories, but I feel like this is not going to be very much like a survival story. I feel like it's going to be like a lot of other things within it, so I feel like I'm going to like it because usually if there's anything has like, sh like perilous journeys, ice and everything, I'm like, yeah, no, no thank you because I don't like reading survivor stories. So I feel like it's going to be something completely different, so I'm excited for that a lot. Um, I'll be able to overlook the other aspects in it, if that's the case. Um, okay, so next we have Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. This is being released on March... March 2nd. March. March 2nd. And this is following two sisters who are estranged, and one is named June. The first one's name is Jane, and she's going to fashion school, and she also is battling an eating disorder and is trying to get by. Her other sister, or her sister named June, is the exact opposite of her. She is rich, she's working as a finance job, and she has a very nice apartment in Texas. Um, the two end up having to become together again when 
June ends up getting um, diagnosed with ovarian cancer. No uterine cancer, it's uterine cancer. Uh, my apologies. Um, and they have to learn how to navigate each other because they have to live together in order for Jane to take care of June. Um, and how everything can kind of like go one way or the other with her. So I read Emergency Contact late last year. Um, and I liked it a lot. I gave it four stars, which for a YA contemporary book, I actually, that's a really good rating for me because I don't like YA contemporary anymore. Um, Mary H. Kuchoy writes really relatable and realistic YA contemporary books because it really is realistic to how today's generation acts with dating and stuff like that. So I really like her writing. She's a really good writer too. I think that she really does representation well and everything else. I feel like it's going to be a really good book and it's a hard hitting one by her too. So I feel like I'm going to like it a lot more because hard hitting contemporary is the best kind of contemporary in my opinion. So I'm very excited for this book and also the cover. I think it's so cute. Anyway, um, next we have Bruised by Tanya Bote. I forgot how to pronounce her last name. Bote, Boteju? Boteju? Um, let me look it up actually because I feel like it'd be easier. Boteju. Boteju. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tan, or uh, <laughs> Bruised by Tanya Botegio. This is being released on March 23rd and this is another hard-hitting YA contemporary book about a girl named... The contemporary about a girl named Daya and after her parents had died in a car accident she feels like self-harming will help her feel pain in her physicality than within versus being in her heart. Um, so she begins to bruise herself. She's confronted with a chance to be a part of a roller derby and she's hooked on that idea. The chances of being bruised are endless. Um, she doesn't like team playing, um, but as she immerses herself deeper into the sport, she finds that roller derby and her teammates are helping her heal the ache in her heart. Um, this sounds really hard hitting, which is obviously, like I said before, the kind of contemporary that I want in my life. I think that it's going to be really, really good. And I haven't really read a lot of books about self-harm, um, so just know before going into that that it, you know, it's going to be triggering for a lot of people. Um, also, I think that it's queer. So another plus for me. I feel like things that make you uncomfortable need to be read about if you can handle it because it helps you think about things differently, I think. And I feel like that's why hard hitting always hits so good for me, you know? So yeah. <laughs> Next we have The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This is published on March 6th. I cannot say March right. Published on March 16th. And this is a wide mystery contemporary about a native teen who must roll out corruption in her community. Um, as a biracial unenrolled tribal member who has caught up in a scandal, Donis has never fit in, both in her hometown and her Ojibwe reservation. Donis dreams of being of going to medical school, but as her mother becomes ill, she has to put that dream on hold and take care of her. Um, her only bright light is Jamie, the charming new recruit on her brother's hockey team, but she gets the sense that Jamie might be hiding something. Everything comes to light when Donna's witnesses a murder in front of her and she becomes a part of the police investigation. She offers to go undercover for the police, but as she does, she also finds some personal things to go undercover for, too. Um, the deaths keep piling up and striking home, and now Donna's must learn how far she'll go to protect her own community. I have never read a YA thriller book. I have one book that is YA thriller, have not read it yet, so I am very excited to read that because I feel like reading YA and thrillers are very good mixed together. But the main reason that I really want to read this book is because of the fact that it's from a native and indigenous owned voices author. Um, something I want to do more this year is read more indigenous slash native owned voices authors because let's face it, we're all living on stolen land, folks. This is what we, the bare minimum that we can do for them. So, especially if you live in the US and Canada. So yeah, I'm reading it and I'm going to make it an effort to read more of those books this year. And next we have Phoenix Flame by Sarah Holland. This is being released on March 2nd. This is the sequel to Havenfall, which came out last year. It's a YA fantasy book about a girl named Maddie and she lives during summers at an inn where it's like a magical um, safe haven for the different realms of magic around them. I think there's four realms in total and it lives in the Colorado, Mount <laughs> Colorado Mountain. Um, Maddie goes every summer to escape from her reality, which is the reality where her mother is on death row for being accused of murdering her own brother. So she has her own reasons to be there during the summers too, and she likes being there during the summer times. Um, but this summer, a dead body is found at the inn, and Maddie must find who did it. And she seeks the help of a new employee named Taya, but Taya seems like she knows more than she's letting on. Yeah, I'm not going to go further into it because it's kind of like going to give away a lot, but it sounds really interesting. I feel like the main reason why I wanted to read this book is because of the cover. I think that it's gorgeous and Phoenix Flame is just as gorgeous as the beginning cover too so it's amazing. Um, I've never read anything like this before so it's going to be exciting and I think that I own one of the books by Sarah Holland. I'm not sure which one it is though but 
I want to read more from her because she is like a classic YA author, I think. So, yeah. Um, next we have Fragile Remedy by Maria Engrande Amora. No. Maria Engrande Amora, which is being published on March 9th. And I'm going to read the synopsis because it's a very good synopsis on Goodreads. 16-year-old Nate is a gem, which means genetically modified medi tissue created by the scientists of Gathos City as a cure for the elite from the fatal lung rot ravaging the population. As a child, he was smuggled out of the laboratory where he was held captive and into the Withers, a quarantined lawless region. Nate manages to survive by using his engineering skills to become a tinker, fixing broken tech in exchange for food and a safe place to sleep. Um, when he meets Reed, a kind and fiercely protected boy that makes his heart race and his misfit gang of scavengers. Nate finds the family he's always longed for, even if he can't risk telling them what he is. Agathos created a fail safe in their gems, a flaw that causes their health to rapidly deteriorate unless they get the regular, regular dose with medication controlled by the Gathos city. As Nate's health declines, his hard-won freedom is put into jeopardy. Violence erupts across the withers, his legal supply of medicine is cut off, and a vicious attack on Reed threatens to expose his secret. With time running out, Nate is left with only two options. Work for a shadowy terrorist organization that has means to keep him alive, or stay and die with the boy he loves. That sounds so interesting and so good. I am excited to read another gay romance. I just love them. I think it's going to be so awesome. I really am liking how many gay and savage romances are coming out this year because it really needs to be done because I'm so sick of reading about straight romances. So, like, I'm just excited about it. And it sounds like a really interesting topic. Like, I think it was supposed to come out last year. So it's been on my TBR for a long time, and I'm excited that's finally coming out and I get to share it with you guys because I just was immediately, like, enraptured by the synopsis when I first read it. So please read it. <laughs> I think it's going to be so good. <sighs> Next we have The Castle School for Troubled Girls by, Alish <laughs> by Alyssa Scheinmel. This is being published on March 2nd, and it says, Our main character's name is Moira, and her parents are sending her to an all-girls boarding school because she got into some trouble last year, and... Her parents are punishing her. At the castle school, Moira is expected to pour her heart out to the very strange headmaster. Um, and on her third night at the boarding school, her and her roommate venture out into the night and find that there's another boarding school on the, across from the entire field for all boys. Moira is convinced the headmaster is hiding something and she has to go through that entire like process of figuring out what's going on. Um, honestly, something you know about me, I love... Um, boarding school novels like it can be the driest synopsis and I'm still gonna want to read it because she has a boarding school in it I love boarding school so much and I feel like they add such like an important like or I feel like they add like a very interesting aspect of the story so like anything with a boarding school I'm probably gonna end up reading even if it doesn't like sound interesting in, in any other aspect to me this sounds interesting obviously but like most of the books like I just read it because it's a boarding school I don't know it's a strange thing about me but it sounds really interesting on top of that too, but yeah. Anyway, next we have I Think I Love You by Ariane de Sombre. It's been published on March 2nd, and this is a... Oh my god. My drink fell. I have water on my desk right now. Yikes. Getting that back to the video. I'm not even going to worry about that right now. <laughs> Why does something always happen in every single video where something ends up going wrong in some way? I think that... God, okay. <laughs> okay, so it says, Emma is a diehard romantic. She loves a meet cute Netflix novel or Netflix movie. Her pet lady cat to let and dreaming up the gay rom com of her heart for the film festival competition she and her friends are entering. If only they listen to her ideas. Sophia is pragmatic. She is big into boycotts, namely one, relationships, two, teen boys and their BO. Reason number reason is she's lesbian. And three, Emma's nauseating ideas. Forget starry-eyed romance. Sophia knows what that what will win. An artistic film with a message. Hear the drama the movie is doomed before they even start shooting. Until a real-life plot twist unfolds and Sophia and Emma start seeing each other in a different light. And the rivalry is starting to feel like an actual rom-com. Sapphic, hate to lovers. Want to read. Immediately. Nothing else needs to be said. I think it's going to be so good. I'm just so excited. It sounds like it's right up my alley. So... Yeah. Next we have The Last Secret You'll Ever Keep by Laurie Farias to Lars. This is a sequel to Jane Anonymous. It's coming out on March 16th. And this is about a girl named... The first book's about a girl named Jane and she has the perfect life is what she thinks. She has a very loving parents, a good boyfriend, and good friends around her. And she is getting ready to start her senior year in high school. And she never would imagine the town where nothing ever happens ends up changing her life forever. 
Um, it's been three months since she escaped captivity and returned home. She's known as the kid who was kidnapped and the monster that kept her captive for most of her life. That's basically all I'm going to say because it is like a mystery novel. I think that it's going to be very hard hitting. I think it's going to be very interesting. I have never read a book that has kidnapping involved in it, so I feel like it's going to be a new thing for me, so I'm excited. The second book, I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, as I said, this is a sequel. I think it's only going to be a duology. It's the last book. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read the first book and the second book. Next, we have, I think, my most excited for for the month is called A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Kova. This is another Y fantasy book. It's been published on March 4th, and this is about a girl named, what's her name? Ira. And she is the most unwanted apprentice in the Tower of Sorcerers. Until the day where she decides to step out and compete at the trial with a bunch of different other really, really strong sorcerers. And basically, and she excels in the trial and then she's invited to go see the royal court with a prince of the tower. Maybe the prince of the tower. He discovers her rare talent for hidden magic and she ends up meeting with a handsome ambassador that, that night. Being put in the spotlight may bring up a dark past and secrets that she didn't know that she actually had in the first place. So that sounds interesting. I know that Elise Koba is kind of like a staple author for some people. I've never read anything by her. I have like three books on my TBR that are written by her now so I know that I want to read from her and a lot of books by her. So I'm excited. Also the, the cover is beautiful and it sounds like it's going to be a classic Y fantasy and I'm so excited to read it. Okay, next we have... The Salt in Our Blood by Ava Morgan. This is published on March 2nd, and look at that cover. It's like a tarot card. I love it, um, which I'll get into. Okay. <laughs> Ten years ago, Kat's mother, Mary, left her at her grandmother's house with nothing but a deck of tarot cards. Now 17, Kat is determined to make a life as different from Mary's as possible. When Kat's grandmother dies, she is forced to move into New Orleans with her mother. There, she discovers a picture of Mary with a holding a baby that is not cat. Leading cat to unravel a dark history and challenge her belief that Mary's mental health is the root to all of their problems. But as Kat explains the reasons for her mother's breakdown, she fears she's experiencing her own. Ever since she arrived in New Orleans, she's haunted by strangely familiar visitors and dreams in the, on the streets of the French Quarter who know, them more than they, than, who know more than they should. Unsure if she can build her relationship with her mother, Kat realizes she must confront her past, her future, and herself in this book. So, it sounds really interesting. Honestly, the only, like, me want to read this book a lot is because of the setting. I want to go to New Orleans so badly. I love the rich culture there. So, I want to read more about that setting in this book. So, that's why I really wanted to read this book. Next, we have The Place Beyond Her Dreams by Obi Aligwekwe, which is published on March 16th. This is a YA fantasy book. I think it's a standalone about a girl named... Obi? No, that's that's the author. I'm so sorry. Her name is Ona and her so it says it's inspired by West African heritage fables and spiritual beliefs. At the sudden death of her grandfather, Ona's pain transports her to, to the mystical Luena, a place of infinite possibilities, free of turf wars, and other ills that plague the earthly dimension she lives in. In Luena, where her grandfather awaits her, once Ona learns she's an airy who one is bestowed with a unique intuitive and spiritual gifts passed down from generation to generation. On her 18th birthday, she returns to Luena and is handed a box to deposit her in exchange her exchange for love and happiness, her greatest desires. Burdened by her quest, Ona crosses paths of danger and heartbreak as the two men that love her dearly are viciously pitted against each other. As evil looms, she learns that dreams carry a hefty price and no one is who they seem. Now she must amass the villain and save the one who she loves, even at the risk of losing everything she holds dear. This sounds so beautiful like a very beautiful story i love books that have like different realms that you have to travel to and are better than the ones you're in and like have to like you know i just think that it's such a really good like topic to talk about and i've really never read a book with like west african culture in there or like mythology so i'm excited to read it and the cover is absolutely gorgeous too this was really hard to find on amazon so i feel like she's not getting as much like hype as she needs to so i feel like everyone should read this book because i think that it's a really good author to support and i want to read this book so badly so please read it um, and then lastly we have The Secret Life of Kitty Granger by G.D. Falkson. This is a YA historical fiction book which is being published on March 2nd and this is about a autistic teenager in London of 1967 and so it says 16 year old Kitty Granger has always known that her, others considered her peculiar. She hates noise and crowds, tends to fixate on patterns, and often feels acutely aware of her surroundings even as she struggles to interpret the behavior of people around her. As a working class girl in London's East End, she spent her whole life learning to hide these traits, until the day when she notices the mysterious man on the bus and finds herself following him, driven to know why he seems so out of place, only to accidentally uncover 
the location of a Russian spy ring. When Kay's keen observation and quick thinking help her survive a dangerous encounter, two secret agents working for Her Majesty's government offers her a job in espionage operation. Kitty's first mission pits her against a conspiracy led by a prominent politician who is also a secret fascist. With help from an unusual team of fellow spies, Kitty must use her wits, training, and instincts to get out alive, and she might as well save the country while she's at it. That sounds so cute and interesting, and it's my first ever book we are reading about on um, Autistic Teen, so I'm so excited that hopefully it gets done right. Um, I don't know if the author's own voices, I'm not really sure, but I'm so excited to read it, and yeah it just sounds so cute and i really like the whole like idea of like the spies and everything too i feel like it's gonna be really interesting so, so that's it for everything today hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and i hope that you're all doing well talk to me in the comments below i'll talk to you back and i'll see you in the next video goodbye